Yay! Yay! Hey, time for new stuff. Uh, let's set up the first of uh, several projectiles problems. Um, and by projectiles, what we're going to say is that it's 2D motion. So we're just moving horizontally in X and then vertically in Y. And then the only thing that's going on, the only acceleration is just due to gravity. Um, there's no acceleration uh, sideways, if you will, right? That's a key concept, and we'll keep coming back to it. So um, here I'm going to start off with what will turn out to be the simplest of our examples, which is uh, just someone running off a cliff. Um, so uh, here's a person at like 50 meters up, and uh, they want to dive into the water, um, and they want to miss uh, the ground. There's like 10 meters of uh, ground there that you don't want to fall on. And I put some spikes um, just illustrating that we, we want to clear that, right? We want to jump into the water. Um, I guess, I mean, if you think about it, if you want to argue that you don't really need the spikes there, that a 50 meter fall onto ground is lethal enough. Um, point taken, right? But anyway, it's just like extra dangerous. So um, we want to fall into the water. So the question is, how fast do we need to run so that we make sure we clear um, the danger and, and land in the water? All right, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're just going to use the expressions that we already have, um, but we're going to apply them in uh, what may be a kind of a new way. All right, here's, here's what we had. Let me write, let me write down what we had. Uh, we had this. In one dimension, uh, we had. Uh, remember this, we had the displacement was V initial uh, times T plus one half AT squared, all right? That's the displacement if you're being accelerated. Uh, it's given by that. So what we're going to do is because this is two-dimensional motion, uh, we're going to represent all these displacements by vectors. So here's what it is. Uh, written in terms of vectors, because we have like an x and a y now, right? So here's the equation written in terms of vectors. I'm going to have my displacement in R is just going to be v initial t plus one half a t squared. Now everything is a vector. You're like, I mean, maybe you're like, what's the big deal? I just put a vector over everything. Um, but this, it's crucial what happens next. This means something, right? Putting those arrows over the letters means something. And it means that this is really a shorthand for each direction. This equation ought to hold in each direction. Okay, here's what I mean. What I mean is, I should be able to write, in the x direction, I have the initial velocity in the x direction plus one half acceleration in the x direction times t squared. And I could write the same thing for the y. So in the y direction, I've got v initial in the y plus one half a y t squared. So this is something we're going to use over and over again as we go through in physics is that the vectors um, mean something. It means that you can have these equations apply in each direction independently. And that's, that's a really, really key concept. Okay, so look, look what this does. Look at the x equation. What is, for example, this person, as he's running off, we're going to say that this person has a certain vi in the x direction. That's what we're trying to find. Um, oops, let me write it so you can, you can see it. Uh, vi in the x direction. Right? Some horizontal speed initially running off the cliff. We're saying we're not jumping up into the air. We're just going to run totally horizontally. Um, we'll deal with uh, initial y velocities um, in the next problem. All right. So for this one, we're keeping it simple just to see how things work. So only horizontal motion initially. Okay, cool. Well, that's this. Right? There's our vix. That's the thing we're trying to find. How fast do we have to run horizontally to make it? All right, but now here's the crucial step. What is the acceleration in the x direction? Um, I'm going to assert that it's zero because for projectile motion sideways, there's no acceleration. The reason for this is because no air 
resistance. In all of our examples, um, in pretty much any physics book you go to, the early examples, they always say neglect air resistance. So that's what we're going to do. We're not going to talk about air resistance uh, at all. That's a later topic. So this is all on the moon or whatever. I, I better not say that, right? Because the moon's got a different gravity than we do. But anyway, no air resistance. We, we don't have to worry about the fact that air is going to hold this thing up. So sideways in the x direction, there's no acceleration. Um, once you start moving sideways a little bit, it's like being on a, a ice rink or whatever. So once you start moving in the x direction, there's nothing to slow you down. You keep moving in the x direction at that same rate. No acceleration, right? So that's going to be crucial. So our x equation is just really simple. It's just v in the x direction times t. And in the y direction, look what we're going to have in the y. In the y, okay, let me write down the x. So the x for projectiles, the x is just going to be v initial in the x direction times t. And then the y is v initial y times t. And then what is the acceleration in the y direction? Well, it's down, right? Usually gravity is pointed, in all of our examples, we're just assuming we're close to the surface of the Earth, so gravity is just pointing down, um, which is going to be a negative. It's in the negative direction. And the acceleration due to gravity is a special number. The acceleration in the y direction is equal to minus g. We give it a nickname because we use it so much. Um, that little g stands for 9.81 meters per second squared. Often I'm just going to call that 10 because that's... Close enough for government work, as they say. So um, anyway, if you want to be precise, if you want to match answers in the back of the book, whatever book you're using, uh, use 9.81. But roughly, it's going to be roughly about 10. So I'll say this. Oh, negative. Um, some people make the mistake of calling G itself negative. Uh, that's going to be horribly confusing. My advice is don't do that. Call G 9.81 and then take... Um, uh, take account of the direction with that minus sign right there. Okay, so v minus one-half gt squared. There we go. Here are our equations that we're going to use over and over again for projectile motion. It's just those two. That's it. Um, and notice, those, are just, those just come off of that one basic equation we had from the last unit, just accelerated motion. That's it. We're just doing it in each direction. And the only acceleration is in the y, right? Okay, so what are we going to do? I want to know, I'm trying to solve for v, right? So here's what I'd like to do. What I'd like to do is vix is just gonna be equal to delta x over t, right? That's a that's that's what gonna be my final answer. Um, delta x, I know what that is. I know I need to go 10 meters. But the t, I don't know how long I've got to clear that ground, right? The question is how long does it take to fall? Almost always that's gonna be our strategy when doing projectile problems, is we're gonna to wanna to know, most of the time, we're gonna to wanna to know. Um, how long does it take to fall? So I want to solve for that t. Um, then what I'm going to do is plug that t back in and figure out how fast I need to go. So what we do, again, almost always, is you solve the y equation, because the y equation has the t in it, has, the, has, has our ability to solve for t. So what I'm going to do is use the y equation. Delta y is viy minus one half g t squared. Cool. So what I'm going to do is use that to get the t. And then I'm going to plug the t back into the first thing and then I'll have my answer. So the question is, how long does it take to fall? Remember, these are totally independent. Um, how long does it take to fall 50 meters? And then in that amount of time, how far do I go in the x? That's the idea. Um, to really bring home the independence, there's the old, um, there's the old thought problem of uh, suppose I have a uh, Suppose I have a gun, let me orient it right to the camera. Suppose I have a gun and then the bullet comes out of the gun. Um, and then there's another bullet balanced on the top of the gun. And so when I fire the gun, uh, one bullet falls straight down and the other one uh, goes off uh, sideways. And the question is, which bullet hits the ground first? Um, and the answer 
is the classic, if there's no air resistance, the classic answer is that they both hit the ground at the same time, that both bullets fall at the same rate, right? One of them just happens to go a lot faster horizontally than the other one, but they both fall. So if you fire a bullet horizontally, it's going to hit the ground in, you know, half a second or however long it takes to fall, you know, a meter or however high you fire it. So they both hit the ground at the same time. The one coming out of the gun just goes a lot farther sideways, but the Y motion is identical and it's totally independent of going uh, some distance in X. Okay, so that's what we do. We always separate projectile problems into X motion and Y motion. Uh, it's great. Okay, so I need to solve for that T. All right, but this gets pretty easy. For this example, this is why this is a pretty easy example, because look, what is the initial, this is VIY, I didn't write that down. What is the initial speed in the Y direction? Zero. I'm going just horizontally, right? So this gets pretty easy. Delta Y is just minus one half GT squared. Uh, okay, now let's be a little careful. Delta, what is our delta Y? Delta Y is our final minus our initial, right? What is the change of position? Well, I'm going down 50 meters. So my delta Y is minus 50 is minus one half gt squared. So now I can solve for t. The minus signs will now go away. Remember, we should never have a negative time. If you have a negative time, that means you didn't put a minus sign in right. So t is just going to be, uh, what's that going to be? 2 times 50, that's 100, over g is 10, and then take the square root. Anyway, it's this. It's the square root of uh, 2 times... 50 over 10, just approximating that thing is 10. Uh, so this is going to be something like, um, oh, what did I get? 3.2 or something. There we go. So it's going to take 3.2 seconds to fall that 50 meters. Now, look, I can put this. I know that the time in the air is going to be 3.2 seconds. Now I can stick that back in here and figure out how fast I have to go. So this is telling me that VIX is just equal to uh, 10. Let me put the units in so you can see how it works. 10 meters divided by 3.2 seconds. Right, that gets me meters per second, as it should. Oops, 3.2. And this is going to be like 3.1 meters per second. So that's how fast I have to go in order to clear uh, the ground and land in the water, at least that fast. Um, is that a doable thing? 3.1 meters per second? Um, I don't know. Remember the idea was uh, to get meters per second to mile an hour, you, you double it and you add 10%. So 3.1, uh, so I'm going to double it. Uh, so six and another so seven, seven miles an hour. Um, that's pretty healthy jogging pace, right? So that's uh, running a 10K and a little bit under an hour, six miles an hour, seven miles an hour. So um, yeah, sure, sure. You could, most most people... Um, who are athletic enough uh, to uh, jump 50 meters into the water, that's not me, um, can go 3.1 meters per second. So uh, if, if you take off on a run, you should, you should be okay. Uh, let's make sure we understand what happens. As this person is falling, uh, when you get to, uh, let's say, this point, You still have the same, so this is a, a, a 3.1, right, that's 3.1, because the X speed never changes during the whole trip. The X speed never changes. This is 3.1. So when you get to that point, it's 3.1, and when you get to this point, just about ready to enter the water, oops. Got to get the right color. Uh, this is also still 3.1 in the X, never changes. What's changing on the way down is the Y, right? Initially, the Y is zero. The Y speed uh, is zero, but gravity keeps adding 9.8, gravity uh, 10, right? Gravity keeps adding 10 meters per second every second in the Y direction, uh, the negative Y direction. So when you get to this point, when you're 25 meters down, how fast? Let's do it. Let's do this real quick. Um, uh, 
bandwidth is cheap, right? So let's just, let's figure it out. When you're halfway down, suppose that's halfway. So what, when you're halfway down, how fast are you going in the y direction? V y squared equals v initial, the v final y squared is v initial y squared. Uh, this will be minus 2g delta y, right? That's just adapting one of the formulas we had last time um, in the y direction. The initial, that's zero. So v final y is equal to the square root of minus 2 times uh, 10 times delta y. That's minus 25 at that point. Uh, what's that? 50 square root of 500. What is the square root of 500? Uh, 22.4 is what I got. So here, this is, I guess, not to scale, right? So you start off at zero. Halfway down, you're going 3.1 in the x, 22.4 in the y. And then when you get all the way to the bottom, how fast are you going all the way at the bottom? That would be v final y at the bottom. This would be minus 2 times 10 times minus, because now you're at minus 50. Uh, so what is that? A thousand, square root of a thousand. So this is like 33.1 or 31, 31.6. That's what I got. All right. So at this point, this is 31.6. So as you fall, the x speed stays the same. The y speed keeps getting bigger and bigger uh, until you get in the water. So this, your path, keeps bending down further and further like that. Okay, so uh, this was a little bit longer than I wanted to go, but I wanted to make sure we kind of went through it slowly. Next time, when we do more complicated examples, we'll start with those boxed equations. We'll just use those as given. Um, and the only difference is uh, what we're going to treat in the future are situations where you might have a launch. So you might have something that's definitely got an initial, uh, here's our initial speed. So our initial speed is actually going to be a vector. It's going to have an X and a Y component, right? It's not just going to be purely horizontal because this actually made our problem quite a bit easier, uh, assuming that at the beginning. So next time, uh, we'll start handling cases where we launch things with uh, a Y speed and X speed, and we'll figure out where it is uh, that they land.